Welcome to Money Secrets with Bill and Mike. I'm Bill Alexander. And I'm Mike Tove. Bill, I want to talk about nudges today. Great idea. So, what is a nudge? Well... <laughs> you mean like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Uh, I, actually, I, I think uh, nudges are epitomized by uh, really Black Friday. Oh, if you no. get right down to it, <laughs> And you, you see the advertisements no. and all of the folks coming home and saying, look how much money I've well, saved let's, after let's, I've let's spent credit every, credit is every penny I've ever had. So, it's gone now. <laughs> well, I think we'll come back and we're going to explain what this is in just a few minutes. But um, that's what we want to do today. And there's a big money secret with it. So stay tuned. Come on back. And we're going to tell you what a nudge really is. Well, hey. Mike, tell, tell our folks yeah. what a nudge <laughs> okay. is. Okay, so um, a nudge is any subtle suggestion that uh, influences our behavior and, and causes us to do something that might be slightly different. And, and this is a concept that came from a professor of economics at uh, the Chicago, Richard Thaler. He just won the Nobel Prize in economics for this. Smart and, fella. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and a uh, colleague of his, Cass Sustein, which is interesting because Thaler is a financial guy and Sustein is a lawyer. Mm, so, sounds like some wow. other folks right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, but this is, they are everywhere and they are subtle and they are just things that influence our behavior and the truth is is you can't ever get away from them. So a nudge is something that's subtle as opposed to right. marketing that's absolutely blatant. Right, yeah. <laughs> but um, but I, you know, I, I was recently in, in a department store, well, actually it was a grocery store, and I saw a pretty powerful nudge because it was advertising um, a, a two liter bottle of soda for $1.99 or five bottles for five dollars. Sounds like a deal. Yeah, except <laughs> that's 10 liters of soda. That's two and a half gallons of soda that you are now going to buy. Which of course you shouldn't because it's bad for you. Right, right? and we actually, yeah, and we even did a show on that a, a few times, a little while ago. So, but people are gonna walk in intending to buy one bottle of soda for two bucks and they're gonna walk out with five bottles. Why? Because it's such a good deal. Well, and that's okay, a nudge. but it, at the same time, it uh, it seems to me that a nudge can be good or bad depending on circumstances. Correct. It's not necessarily a bad thing to. No, it's nudge. not. And 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 Thaler even talks about this. Um, and, and so, for example, the um, the people that set up cafeterias, all right, mm -hmm. they have to put the salad bar somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if you put the salad bar in the front more people get salad than if you stick it in the back. Well, okay. And that's a nudge. And the people that make these designs are called choice architects. Okay, that makes sense. Well, of course, if they're trying to help people eat healthy, then, then you stick having the salad, the salad up the front. front would make sense. Right. Uh, or if you were trying to make profit, you would probably right. put up front whatever exactly. item made you more money. Now, to be fair, nudges are everywhere. And in fact, uh, in Chicago, there is this very dangerous curve right on 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 the on the Lake Shore. In fact, it's on, literally on Lake Shore Drive. And what they have done is they have created a nudge. So they have put in horizontal lines on the street. But as you get closer to the curve, the lines get closer and closer together, and so you appear to be, or you feel as though you're moving faster, you're accelerating, and so you slow, slow down. down. Good idea. Okay. So. But of course, if we go back to your cola uh, right. example, if if you were a consumer who was planning to purchase three or four bottles of soda anyway, the nudge is actually helpful because you're sure. saving money. You save so, some money. So that's a good, even if it's bad for you, <laughs> bad for your children, you know, well, that's a different, uh, different sure. thing. Sure, although w that's <laughs> usually we don't, I mean, you can, I remember my dad, um, my dad became a member of one of these big wholesale clubs. Oh, okay. And, um, and he was a fan of this. And the reason he was is he could go in and buy this monster tub of pistachios 
for a certain amount of money. He would sit there and he would eat them to well, his heart's smart content. Fella. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but, but you know. see the good news about pistachios, you actually have to yeah, crack them. I know, but then there was but then there was the popcorn and then there was for you then. Yeah. Right. Then, things, then soda. Yeah. But um, but the point is is that these things are out there, and we don't even realize we're being nudged when we are. Well, and it seems to me like that's the key to this whole thing. I mean, right. but, but marketing is everywhere, you know, and there are lots of nudges, you know, buy one, get one, oh, being yeah. a huge nudge. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, one we see that's, uh, that even got me one time, and I've regretted it ever since, mm -hmm. was you know, uh, get our magazines for free for, for 30, 60, 90 days. Yes. Um, you know, doesn't cost you a thing. Right. Go ahead and just sign up now and uh, right. and look at our product. Uh, and guess yeah. what? Getting out of that is so hard. <laughs> right. Well, that's that's true. Um, um, but but one of the things that I wanted to to point out is that we go through life not aware of the things that are influencing us and um, and, and I have a little graphic that we're going to put up um, but take a look at this graphic there's I've got two tables in the graphic and look at the table on the left look at the table on the right and so for everybody out there just go ahead and do this and in your mind identify which table looks skinnier longer and skinnier than the other one Okay, does everybody agree that it is the left-hand table, the table on the left? Of course Perfect. Of course, now, this is a trick question. It is a trick question. <laughs> now watch what happens when we actually take the table top and superimpose it. They're identical. And yet, we were fooled into thinking that one was longer and skinnier because of the optical illusion and nudges really do that as well so it's important to be aware of how these things affect us that they exist and then we can make choice decisions as to whether or not it's a good idea to allow ourselves to be nudged it's one thing to allow it it's another to be tricked okay we'll be right back and uh, we'll pick this up Hey, welcome back. So, Bill, um, in the break we were talking about how we're not only guilty of, but we we nudge ourselves, don't we? Well, we certainly do. I mean, I mean, I know in my the as you know, I do a seminar every every month on long-term care planning and asset protection planning, and I I give my folks a nudge in there because. Uh, I've always said that anyone who suffers through one of my seminars deserves something, so I give them a coupon for a free consult at my office. Uh, that's my nudge. Yeah. That, that helps people decide to come in to see me, which is exactly what I would like them to do when they come to my seminar. Exactly. And I do seminars as well, and I have a couple of nudges in there too. First off, they are dinner seminars, so... There's your first yeah, nudge. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you come to eat the dinner, <laughs> and... Uh, and I do the presentation and then I go around and give everybody an opportunity to get on my calendar before they eat. Mm -hmm. Very good. I hope, hope you feed them well. Well, we do. <laughs> we use good restaurants and uh, we do try to feed them well. Well, truthfully, in the most positive sense of a nudge, a nudge is a way to say, look at me. You know, mm -hmm. for, for a product, person, whether it's professional service or whether it's supermarket or whatever it is, it's it's look at me. Right. And that can be a positive thing or it can be a very negative thing. Right. And then again, I guess that comes down to, let's say, two different uh, sides. One is, is who was doing the nudging and what's their intent. Mm -hmm. And also what I was alluding to earlier is that personal awareness. If I go into a situation or a store or whatever and there is some kind of a promotion, an advertisement, a nudge that is definitely not in my best interest, then uh, I know to avoid it. Well, the key is knowing 
what you need or what you specifically want and then obviously when you get nudged to do more or buy more to ignore it I mean that's uh, you know and, and it can be really hard to do depending <laughs> on the circumstances well, and we all are victims of this this is not something uh, that on, only those no. that uh, don't know better well that's <laughs> true and, uh, and and it's why it's so effective and and the truth is you know what's funny um, Several years ago, I was uh, part of a, uh, a survey or a group of surveys. In fact, it was even a nudge where they would call you up and they would say, hey, would you be a panelist on this marketing research survey? And uh, we're going to show you different things and get your reactions. And, and what happened was is that we would go in and they would show us different products or different advertisements and we would respond to what was most attractive to us. And the, 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 the entity that is putting those things out, they're taking that data and they are making choices, that they are the choice architects and they are going to design what they do mm -hmm. based on the research. Well, true. And of course, uh, you can be nudged in ways uh, other than getting out and going to the mall or whatever. Oh, yeah. There are lots of, of, of well, subtle nudges every, that occur every day. Sure. Uh, even on the internet, another great example of a nudge is if you're uh, searching for a particular product, uh, but you don't purchase it, then within a day or two, a coupon will probably show up uh, where for that specific product right. or uh, another, if you're looking for a service, it is likely as you're researching things online that an ad will pop up for that particular service because well, the internet is very powerful and our privacy <laughs> has pretty much gone away uh, and that's why these marketing companies can do that. The bigger nudge on the internet is if you just go and do a general topic search mm -hmm. on any search engine, the first 10 items that come up on your search engine list, that is also a nudge because most people do not scroll to the second page and True. those that do, fewer still scroll to the third page and the fourth and the fifth. Sure. And so those search and items, whether it's a business or whether whatever it is, that show up at the top of the list that is a nudge because they get more attention and they influence our behavior. Absolutely, no question so, about it. And it, I guess that there we, there's a nudge. Whatever <laughs> influences our behavior, for good or bad. Right, and, and so, but again, I think the key here is, is, that, is awareness. And, and that's gonna be our money secret, is, um, is, is knowing that anywhere you go, there are going to be subtle pressures, subtle suggestions, influences, and the more people are aware that they're out there, the more opportunity there is for them to make a conscious decision as to, am I gonna participate in that or not? Well, the thing that gets next to me is, is the concept, oh, I've just saved us so much money <laughs> because I've purchased these things. Well. And, and the fact of the matter is, you're not saving money when you're buying things. No, that's correct. And, <laughs> and I grew up across the street from a, a, a exact thing. The, bless her heart, um, the, the wife and, and uh, of this couple that I grew up with, uh, and they were my parents' age, and he actually later became the president of a, of a university here in North Carolina. But um, she would go out and she would literally come home saying, hey honey, look at the mink coat I just bought. It was on sale for $300. It's normally $500. I saved $200. Absolutely. Well, that's the whole point <laughs> yeah. is the fact that it, it might have been something that you don't need. Yeah. Uh, and so you're not saving money unless you are, before you get nudged, you yeah, know right. that that's something that you need or at least that you want and you're looking looking for the best price and the best product that you can get without right. buying other stuff. You know, you had mentioned going to the dollar store. Please oh. tell our folks about that. Okay, <laughs> I will we take a quick break and we're gonna come back because that's a whole nother one. We'll be right back, stay tuned.
Welcome back. So, Bill, you, you we are. Uh, Tell us about I will, going I will. to the my, dollar my, store. My, my daughter wanted to go buy some Christmas presents for all of her friends. And she wanted to go to one of these dollar stores. Well, and we went there. This was just uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. And so she was saying, well, we're going to go there because it's going to be so cheap and it won't cost me a lot of money well, and of well, course we're going in and so everything you know, is a dollar a well it was up it was five dollars or less but anyway so everything that goes into the basket is you know is five dollars five dollars five dollars five dollars and uh and i was looking at this and i was thinking to myself wow um, and so it, what was the bill when you came out? It was almost 55 bucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you were thinking going in maybe 10 or 15, I bet. Yeah, well, she would, no, it's her money. Um, she got some Christmas money. And, uh, but the point was is that um, it added up. The, well, you're given the incentive to purchase To go more. into the store to buy cheap, and then because it's so cheap, even every single item, and Yes. So you pick up things that you might not have otherwise purchased. Which always comes with the justification of, well, it's so inexpensive, this will work fine. But you so, spent, still spent more money. Exactly. And that's why those stores are successful. No is question about it. They bring you in and they... Uh, and they... Or you could say they suck you in. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know that they would. That they would. No, actually, I love shopping at the dollar store. I buy lots of things there, so I understand. So, yeah, but, um, but you know, but we also went out to very, very, very fancy dinner at one of the most exclusive restaurants in town. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, it's a gorgeous place, and it's all decorated up, and we had this wonderful dinner, but as you walk out, they have their own little store and they are selling all kinds yeah. of things. A lot of nice things. restaurants yeah. 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 So they're selling their own label of wine and cutlery and, and souvenir glasses from the place. <laughs> no, they, I don't think they had t-shirts. Well, you go to different restaurants than yeah. me. <laughs> um, but, um, and you know, but, but when you walk in, you don't see the store. The way it's, uh, it's, it's organized, you walk past it, you don't really see it, but when you're walking out, it's right in front of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's a little, that's a little that's extra a nudge, nudge to try to get you to spend, you just spent $200 on folks, dinner and now you're going to spend another $50. For those 50 folks who are waiting on others to join them, that well, certainly makes well, sense Well, that was, too. yeah, well, there was a couple trying to get in without reservations ahead of us and they well, were very I, politely and, explaining that, yes, we'll be glad to accommodate you. It's about a two hour wait. Oh, I understand. On the wait list. So. Well, there's so many examples. I know that my wife and I uh, try to enjoy a cruise about once a year. Uh, some years we don't make it, but oh. but th there's lots of nudges with those uh, oh, folks. Oh, my goodness. But I mean, yeah. one is buy early and we give you free perks. We give you free drinks, we give you free this, or we give you free that. But of course, if you purchase at the very last minute, oftentimes you get a, a huge discounted price <laughs> if, it's, it's, if it's available. Of course, sometimes the perks offset the other, so it's really just a matter of how to go that. If we you know were, you're going to buy a cruise. Well, we were, oh no, but we were on <laughs> one, and the, the nudge that they had was uh, to do a scavenger hunt to learn your way around the oh, ship, and they mm -hmm. took you to everything. So, at any event, well, anyway, so um, the money secret for today is just be aware that these exist and know that when a, a vendor is nudging you, it's to nudge you in a direction to buy more stuff or to spend more money and make a conscious decision as to whether or not that's what you want to do. Absolutely. So the real key is knowing what you need or want before you get before out there. Before you get out there, that's <laughs> right. Okay. And be less susceptible to the nudges so that right. you come away with what you really want. And so I'm going to close with our own nudge. Good. We are coming out with a book uh, called Money Secrets with Bill and Mike based on last year's episodes, their show. And uh, this is an extraordinary, wonderful yes, book that you all should have. And uh, <laughs> so anybody that, uh, that wants to get a copy, give us a call and uh, come in and we will provide you with a complimentary copy. So I'm Mike Tove. Uh, my company is AIN Services. We can be reached at 800-363-2296. 
And I'm Bill Alexander, an attorney with W.G. Alexander & Associates. We focus on estate planning, elder law, and asset protection. And I would nudge you <laughs> to uh, look us up to come to our long-term care asset protection seminars the second Wednesday of each month. And also to listen to my radio show, Asset Protection Today, at 11 o'clock each Saturday morning on WPTF uh, 80, AM 680. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.